Hello, I'm Lux, and we're revisiting a series we haven't, well, not revisiting, we're getting back to a series we haven't been, haven't been to in a while. <laughs> and I'm Ember, and this is our thoughts on Steven Universe, Season 5, Episodes 13 through 16. Very nice episodes. They were like some of the filler episodes, which you, I, I don't really consider any episode that's not about the main story a filler in Steven Universe, because... They're all, like, building something. Because you could very much compare the exposition episode of Steven Universe to an exposition episode of Ruby. Because most of the episode of Garnet being on the spaceship was exposition of the story of the history of Rose Quartz. And... Um, we revisited Lars a couple of times in these episodes, and those were pieces of the main story. Even though he's headed back to Earth, we're finding more out about things. Like, they're headed towards a, I think it was Yellow Diamond? They're in Yellow Diamond territory. And they're going towards a mining facility to get the materials needed to repair their hyperdrive or warp drive. Basically, make ship go even faster. Yes. Ben, space and reality. So you don't have to suffer from time dilation thanks to traveling near the speed of light. <laughs> because, hey, science has proven that warp drives are possible. And then someone proved that it was even more possible because, hey, I found a more efficient way to make ships do this. The only problem is it's still way too expensive for energy-wise for us to actually make. But on a TV show, you just have to worry about writing costs, production costs... Artist cost, distribution, copyright. I'm just glad math actually says warp drives are real. Which is cool. Speaking of cool, Sadie Killer. I really enjoyed how they kept having different songs. That we weren't just replaying The Working Dead constantly. Yeah. And I know I, I skipped episode 13. But we talked about 13. 13 was the one with the flashback. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, we can go back. Oh, oh we actually... Hmm. Well, if we think of anything, we can go back to that one. But <laughs> oh God, I also wow, oh, I did I did such a good transition there. Wow. But back to actually talking about this particular episode, that was great. The songs and the actual full song in the episode, not just the partial songs that we're getting in the other parts. But a full song, and for all the partial songs to be different songs, not just basically think the movie that thing you do one song and that's all there is. This show does a ton of variety in music. Mm -hmm. And it's just gotten better over time. Because if you look at the first episodes of Steven Universe, the drawings were off model, the songs were okay, and then it just kept going and getting better and better and better. They're still having, based on some review videos I've seen online, some issues with how they frame certain shots to get the most action out of it. Like they don't pick the the best angle to give tension to a scene where there should be tension. But other than that, I'm thinking they're they're nailing stuff better and better each time. And just the personality coming out of every character on the show. Sadie, her interaction with her, they're so real. Because we saw in previous episodes, her mom has been a total stage mom all her life. And so Sadie finally gets what she wants of leave me alone and realizes oh well I kind of would like to share this with her you know because there's that happy medium because Barbara Miller was doing the way 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 too involved and Greg's parents wanted nothing to do with it so you know that that happy medium just being involved enough in your kid's life to give them support for what they want to do and not push them towards something you want them to do. But encourage them that once they really dive into something, give them the encouragement to keep doing it, even if they hit a spot that stops them from doing it. Because there's going to be something. They're, they're going to hit a wall at some point. You need to be there to help them either through that wall or over that wall. That's your job as a parent. My parents did that for me. Like, you are an artist. I can draw pretty pictures. <laughs> Find me in my room, banging my head on the keyboard. Art problems again? Why won't the leg look right? <laughs> uh, and then there's my art teachers. Draw it darker. But that's the way I see it. Draw it darker. 
Uh, but yeah, it's just the interactions with all these characters is, even though it's a fantasy world, they're very realistic. And you're like, I can see that. I've experienced that. I've experienced that. You mean flying around in space? Kind of. <laughs> oh, not really. But I mean, the hanging out with the group of social outcasts and going from feeling that we're worthless to, no, we're just as good as everybody else. We're just different. Oh, you should have seen the group of my friends in, in high school. I, I was basically dressed as a cowboy most of the time. Not the classic cowboy. I'm talking about more like an Australian cowboy. And then there's my friend. He was really tall. <laughs> we were a motley crew. We, we did not look like we belonged together. <laughs> it was great. I also had a friend who could name any Pokemon just by listening to the sound. This is also back when there were only 151 of them, mind you. But still. <laughs> uh, but yeah. And the art's been really consistent lately, too. Also consistently getting better. Anything in particular you want to go over about this episode? I should say any more because you've already named a spot. <laughs> Yeah, well, I kind of just jumped to Sadie's episode because, okay, I grew up watching musicals. I like the music segments, especially when they're well integrated. Because that's always a thing with a musical is people just randomly break out into song and it doesn't fit. That was one of the cool things about the way they did Chicago for theaters. Someone who made a movie version didn't want it to be like a musical. All of the songs made sense in the context of the story. There was no breakage. They were all fit in. The song was performed on stage, at the club, or out at a picnic, or playing on a radio. Nobody call me on that. I know that didn't happen in Chicago, but it's a reasonable example. <laughs> and I just love the way they also handled certain things, like how they mistook the um, talent person for her mom in a bad costume and how that actually gave Sadie more oomph to really put it out there because she thought I'm going to show my mom show her that this is my thing mm -hmm. and I love the setup I also love when Greg got the email back this is the worst recording ever oh let's get them some actual good equipment I really like the song <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nice bait and switch. Like the last episode, we're gonna get. Well, we're gonna talk about that when we get there. <laughs> uh, just that was a great bait and switch in that particular situation. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I like them, which is too bad because I love the song. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I love how Greg's dick. She, he's not just doing frivolous things with his money. He is a little bit, but he's also spending it in good places. I'm also like, if he did it right, I hope, he put it in a bank and it's gaining interest like the wazoo. Yeah, uh, hopefully he put it across multiple banks because FDIC insurance only covers up to a certain dollar amount. So once you get over a certain threshold, you have to actually have more than one bank. Hmm. I'm just hoping like he's actually not really spending his money. He's actually spending the interest on his money. Because he made enough that he could probably just spend the interest and not touch the actual money. Now we're on to Garnet messing with her future vision. Let's just see where this goes. We're in a completely different reality that I cannot predict. And then we find out why she's trying to do this. Because she's like... I can't predict what Steven's going to do anymore because she was basing it off of her old, how she, she was still seeing him as a kid. I can understand why he doesn't really change shape that much, but his overall personality has grown up a lot with the show. Yes, he's matured a great deal and he's much more responsible and focused than he was back in season one. Also Garnet covered in kittens. Adorable. Now that we've seen the episodes, I'm going to go to DeviantArt and find fan art of that. Because she, she, was, she was cute. It was very cute. 
Another cute scene is that kitten on Lion. Oh my god. Yes, that is adorable. But when they were chasing after the kitten, I'm like, that's not how you catch a cat. You guys want to stop and say kitty, kitty, kitty. And no, that is not the tone I use when I'm calling mine. I don't want to wake her up, so. <laughs> <laughs> She's a wonderful kitty of her own. And I just like the beginning of like, you're, you're working here? Yeah, I'm like, I could have sworn this was going to be Mare Dewey when it reopened. Yeah, and who hires these people? Yeah, because do, does the owner of the Big Donut even know that it, the Big Donut is closed? Has it still been getting deliveries? What's going on? Yeah, how does the economy in this situation actually work? I also like the fact that they ordered 20 pizzas, and instead of eating them, they randomly delivered them to people and some seagulls. I love the first one. <laughs> enjoy your pizza! Thanks! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ow, like, enjoy your pizza! Oh, thanks! <laughs> all I'm thinking is, with how hard that pizza box probably hit that guy, that pizza's all on one side of that box. And I'm like, poor pizza. Also, surprise me. I wonder what those toppings were. I'm guessing the seagull one was anchovies. It could be, but gulls are scavengers. They're going to take what they can get. Also, surprise me, the pizza restaurant, I would say those are going to be the cheapest toppings on the menu. Mm. Unless um, they had authority to upcharge mm. for premium toppings. Gotcha. And I have a feeling Stephen was the one who did the bill for the pizzas. Probably with some dad money. Probably. Uh, not like they're hurting or anything. Yeah, not really a lot of expenses when only one member of the household eats, and I'm sure most of the electricity is provided from gym tech, considering they live in a temple. Yes, I know they're connected to the power grid because they've managed to destroy the power grid a couple seasons ago. But the whole random randomness chasing, I also forgot to mention that, when Garnet quit her job, ripped muscles. Yes. Flex. Oh, there goes my shirt. <laughs> you dropped your hat. Here's my shirt. Old Twilight meme. Yes. Apparently the werewolf boy could not keep his shirt on. I've only ever been slightly interested to read those things just to see how bad they are. I mean, they're fan fiction. Or was it? No. It's Fifty Seeds of Grey. That's actually fan fiction of Twilight. Yes. That is hilarious. Any more in this episode, or do we want to move on to the next one? Oh, well, just the craziness and, you know, posing for Vidalia and then running off to chase the kitten and having no clue what's happening. Oh, gee, Garnet, you're like the rest of it us. Because uh. we focus on what we want to have happen and we try to make it happen. And I fail a lot at that. It takes practice. Yes. But sitting there in the rain with crying kittens going, I don't know what's next. Oh, what do you want to be next? I want to get these kittens out of the rain. Okay, that's a good idea. Let's do that. <laughs> also, that was cool. By doing all those unexpected things, they found those kittens. So that was good for the kittens. Quite. Also, going back to the, um, yeah, it was the first episode, right? With uh, Lars and the off-colors. Off yeah, and when Garnet visited them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love how when Garnet visited them and was complimenting them like crazy, and they all felt like they were being insulted because where they come from, why would anyone compliment them? Sincerely. Because it sounds like they have been complimented before, but... Sarcastically. Because, yeah, Garnet was just over the moon. <laughs> She was like, oh, that must be a story. Tell me everything. Yeah. I said, oh, cool. A little bit of a gossip there. Okay, now we know who in the household reads romance novels. <laughs> uh, I actually can't stand romance novels, but I will read romance fanfics. Romance novels fall into a different set of tropes than romance fanfiction. Ah. Uh, I suddenly remembered fruit when it comes to fanfiction, but moving on. <laughs> so... Mayor Dewey unemployed? You know, to me it was very clear in an earlier episode 
from like the last set that we watched that he was going to be working at the Big Donut. Yeah, it was like obvious to both me and you that he's going to end up working at the Big Donut. It's a perfect fit. This episode, I like how it actually worked that in repeatedly throughout the episode. Also, these episodes feel like half hour episodes, but they're only like 11 minutes and it's great. Yeah, because they're getting a lot in without it feeling like they shoehorned it in. Because so often you watch an, a really packed episode and you're like, ooh, they really need to make this a two-parter. And this we're going, wait a minute, the episode, wow, the episode's, it's been 12 minutes, the episode's over. Yeah. Cause and the pacing is amazing. Yeah, because to me, almost never do I feel like an episode of Steven Universe is rushed. They somehow managed to get all of the pieces to flow in such a nice way that you don't feel rushed in the episode. Yeah, so they're really good at the pacing. And as I was moving on to it, it's just like I brought up the pacing because it's wonderful. But they drop hints that Mayor is comparing himself, that Mayor Dewey is comparing himself to the donut. And we're like, yeah, go work there. <laughs> I, I also like, I can't remember his name, this conspiracy guy. Yeah, neither of us remember his name, but he's the conspiracy guy, the, the friend of Steven, and actually apparently was a friend of Lars when they were younger. Yes, until things went south with their time in the little haunted area. And it's Petey's big brother, so I remember Petey's name, but Ronaldo not so much. Ah, yes, Ronaldo, yeah. I love his reaction. <laughs> well, this is terrible. Why wasn't I... <laughs> Why not me? This is so ironic. It's hurting my soul. <laughs> and I'm looking, going, dictionary, ironic, ironic. Is he using it right? I know we don't use it right a lot. <laughs> like the song, ironic, isn't about irony. It's about what people would consider irony, but it's not actually the definition of the word irony. But the thing is, the definitions of words can change over time because there's a difference between the connotation and the denotation. Like, we think healthy means something that's good for us. Healthy means without disease. I'm very glad to know that the healthy choice frozen dinners are not diseased. Yeah, that would be embarrassing. So the correct denotative word would be healthful when referring to foods that are considered good for one. So yeah, language, it's a slippery thing. Very. But I have a feeling the show used it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's that good when it comes to his writing. And there's a lot of videos out there like Steven Universe sucks, that I'm like, it's kind of like when people say, Ruby's story sucks. I'm like, it has its problems, but it's not as bad as you think. Though I do want to watch certain shows that I've seen some videos for, and they go, yeah, this, to this show totally blows like sword art online apparently like the first episode's good but after that point the story just goes downhill because the main character gets way too op way too quickly so i'm like oh power trip cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I love how he's actually named all the donuts after him too i can deal with that we've been to this crazy donut shop and they've had some really wacky donuts so naming them after himself just like i that's cool, because it's a small town. That's a unique thing. It's perfectly fine. It may be a little bit... What's the term? It's when you like yourself. Narcissistic. Narcissistic, yes. It may be a little bit narcissistic, but hey, it gives a nice little thing to it, and everyone can get their donuts now. And the fact that they created a donut after Lars... I want a donut after me. I have no idea what it'll be flavored, but I want a donut after me. I'm thinking something with chocolate. No sprinkles, though. I don't know what sprink sprinkles like. They like have no flavor. Has anyone ever noticed that sprinkles have no flavor? They're more of a textural component. Yeah, it's kind of like how people like the edge of the brownie, and some people like the middle. Yeah, that's a textural thing. And there's me who goes, "It's brownie." <laughs> Just give me. I don't care what piece. May I have some, please? Ah, <laughs> uh, and. I like how he was integrated throughout the episode as well, how he was trying to be involved in all these things, and he's realizing, like, ah, oh, I, I need something to do, and none of this works. Like, we're going for scary, scary, Dad, not funny, scary. <laughs> Did you cut holes in my sheets? <laughs> yeah, and just that he didn't fit in anywhere. 
he's never done anything except be mayor. You know, and that's going to really resonate with a lot of older adults because a lot of people are defined by their jobs. There are people who, when they've retired, they don't know what to do with themselves because their whole life has been about their job. And sometimes you can actually continue your job even though you retired from the place you are working. Your skills may still be useful in that area. Or you can still do something that you enjoy as much as your job. Like, for instance, Mayor Dewey had certain things about his job he really enjoyed, like getting up every morning, getting into a suit. Well, getting up every morning and getting into what he considered his outfit for being a mayor and then doing his job and seeing people smiling and stuff like that. He, he gets to continue doing that because he has to get up in the morning, put on a uniform and stand in a place where people gonna, are going to either come with smiles or leave with smiles. And he's there serving the people, literally. Because, you know, there's going to be people who come in who are going to look like zombies and then buy some coffee and smile on the way out <laughs> with a couple of Dewey classics in their back. Also, does he call them like Dewey Old Fashions or Old Fashioned Deweys? Yeah, I, I think it's just going to be the name Dewey and then the name of the donut because the glazed were Dewey Originals. Mm. Anything else we want to go over any of the episodes? Because we, we did put them pretty chronologically, but we kind of jumped a lot in the episodes. <laughs> Oh yeah, we jumped a ton, but I want to go back a little bit to Pink Diamond because I'm still trying to figure out the truth of that story. Yeah, like with the way Stephen was talking in one of the episodes with, yeah, the first episode with Garnet, it was like, hmm, maybe Pink Diamond actually isn't shattered or if she is, the pieces are still around. And since we have seen other shattered gems, those pieces work together. Maybe Pink Diamond's pieces are somewhere on Earth or are parts of... Parts of the super weapon. Maybe. Because, you know, those pieces wanted to reform and they were bubbling each other. And speaking of bubbling, you had the theory that maybe she's actually bubbled somewhere and there are pieces of a different gem. Yeah, because everyone believes Pink Diamond was shattered, but what if the shattered pieces that everyone saw were from a different gem? And I don't mean a homeworld gem, I mean like a regular Earth gemstone. Hmm, that's a good point. You know, a complete fake out. Because Rose Quartz's sword can't shatter gems. Yeah, it can only poof them. And poofing isn't shattering. So if all she did was poof, Pink Diamond, Pink Diamond would still be around unless Rose Quartz recovered the gem and bubbled it. And with the way some of the uh, previous stories were going, I almost like think that Pink Diamond may have actually changed her mind about Earth at one point, and maybe Pink Diamond actually is still intact and faked her own death. Yes, so that that has been one of our theories. But the little that I've seen of Pink Diamond... She seems very haughty? Hooty? Haughty? I would say completely stuck-up silver spoon in her mouth, um, spoiled teenager. Yeah, I'm trying to say the word that means that. <laughs> it's like haughty, hooty, it's... Wait, you mean like the pony, hoity-toity? Something like that, yes. You know, very, hmm, <laughs> I am very posh. Look at how posh I am. What interaction we saw in Steven's vision was much more juvenile. And based on what I've seen of her design, she seems very juvenile. Uh, maybe a maybe one of the newer diamonds, and that may also be why people um mourn her so much. Because she was the youngest of the diamonds. Very much so, because we know that all the other gems come from kindergartens, but we don't know how the diamonds originated, and we don't know if the diamonds are all the same age. Hmm. Because Pink Diamond seems, at least in action, to be younger. And if she was the youngest, and Blue being as sentimental as she is, of course she would mourn the loss. Just, they, they are doing such a good job on these, and I've managed to avoid spoilers for a lot of this but I know there's good really good episodes coming up. That's all I know <laughs> based on reactions I saw that didn't spoil anything for me other than really good episode or 
it came up in my news feed a lot and I was able to block it out. So I'm like, that's not a lot of articles about that particular episode. So something happened in it that's really good. I'm just going to ignore it. So yeah, I, I managed to stay very spoiler free on this, which is great. Yeah, my feed hasn't figured out that I like Steven Universe, so it hasn't been an issue yet. Speaking of that, Google needs a button that says keep spoilers away. Like, don't show me news on this until I see you can. I still am interested in news from this, but right now I don't want news from this. I will want it later. Yes. Here's a date you can start showing me. Mm-hmm. Because it's very annoying, all of the ducktail spoilers that were in my feed. Because unlike Ember, who has a very sharp memory and just glancing at an image, and her brain automatically assembles a theory that's at least 90% correct. Yeah, you mean like when we were watching that episode of Denver the Last Dinosaur uh, randomly on television. Yeah, we were flipping through the channels one night, and we ended up in like in the middle of the episode. And she goes, oh yeah, this happened. I'm like, and then by the end of the episode, it's going to be like this. I'm like, what? And then at the end of the episode, what? <laughs> That's so, you did that whole thing just because you figured out that that was the main guy. That was the problem. This is how it was going to be solved. Just, that was, that was in 30 seconds of us watching it. And just to be clear, I don't actually remember the episode from my childhood. I only watched Denver intermittently. Yeah, I was definitely more of a Denver fan than her. She mostly watched because it was on before Dino Saucers, which was another show I also really liked. The only episode right now of Dino Saucers that's really sticking in my head, though, is where they were spoofing or lampooning? Give me a skim here. It's a famous, like, detective novel. Sherlock Holmes? No. Uh, noir. Oh, um, you normally say film noir. Yeah, film noir. It's a style that were, like, they were basically kind of playing off that style. And there's a most common one that people usually talk about. And they usually make a pun out of the name. I can't remember what it is. Ah, Maltese Falcon. They were making uh, references to that in that particular episode because one of the, I think it was the Stegosaurus, had to go back to the home planet and he had to solve a mystery there. And it was very film noir. So yeah, that's the only episode that really sticks in my head right now from that series. Yeah. And well, the intro. There were all sorts of ridiculous episodes, like when the dinosaurs and the bad guys ended up in a human courtroom together. <laughs> Wow, I think I actually vaguely remember that particular scene. But we should probably get back to these episodes, finish up, and... Yeah, we'll probably cut most of this. But people like us going nuts. So, any final thoughts before we wrap up? Or should we just say people... Sorry, we're bouncing around a bunch of different shows, but hey, Steven Universe! <laughs> it's just interesting to see where we'll go from here, because these were all lighter episodes. We're not dealing with a heavily connected story arc, even though the episodes do have connections. And we didn't specifically talk about your favorite bait and switch the whole time we're hearing Steven read the letter. I forgot I forgot about that. That's the bait and switch I was referring to earlier. Yes, it was great. Letters to Lars. That is the best twist ever. And just before I say it, if you haven't seen the episode, pause now. Go and find it. I'm pretty sure it's going to be easy to find somewhere on the internet. Watch it, then come back. All right. Spoiler in three, two, one. Throughout the entire episode, we think it's one of those classic things where the voiceover of the character, because we think the person who's reading the letter is imagining the character's voice in their head. Wow. Oh my God, that just hit me. <laughs> because... Literally the entire time we hear Steven's voice, thinking it's in Lars's head. It's actually Steven who's sticking out of Lars's head, reading the letter. So Steven was literally in Lars's head as he was reading the letter out loud. Wow. I just got that, and that's amazing. Oh my god. That's cool. Wow. See how clever these people are? But yeah, right then, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that at all. Like, Stephen, if you're going to just read this out loud, why did you send it? 
<laughs> Some people enjoy being read too. Oh, that was great. It was like, check out our Wednesday podcast. Yes, please. Remember his reading room. See you there. But yeah, that was like the best twist ever. Because it wasn't like something stupid or something that you're like, oh, I can't watch that episode again. Yeah, it doesn't affect its rewatchability at all. No, it was just like really pleasant. At the end, you're like, oh, cool. But the stuff that was contained in the episode was still very entertaining. So you don't get spoiled by the fact that the ending is a twist like that. <laughs> ah, so shall we do the outro now? <laughs> Uh, do we want to mention at all the fact that Pearl is back in Beach City, you know, after Lapis took the farm? Because mm. cause Peridot was living out at the farm, but now apparently she's back in Beach City and trying to do improv. Yes, like literally, they're a plunger. It works better that because people can actually see it's a plunger. I just improved improv. Yeah, and here's the thing. Um, what's his name? Jamie. Jamie? What wasn't emphasizing that it was a plunger with his miming. He was pretending to balance it on his hand after he pulled it out of something. Yeah, that's that, more like a magic trick. Yeah, he wasn't indicating to the audience that I have a plunger. To indicate to the audience you have a plunger, you pick up a spent looks like a stick, and then you mime a toilet. And people will automatically go... Plunger! Because that's the most common use for a plunger, is to unclog a toilet. Yeah, but the thing is, in improv, you gotta keep moving. It's always yes and, which is thing I actually need to learn in my life, because apparently I say no to a lot of good ideas in my head. Which also explains why I'm terrible at improv. I'm an okay actor. Terrible at improv. Except for this one time... In an acting class, it was great. I wish it would have been recorded. Or random times when I'm playing around with story ideas in my head. Oh, that's a really good one. Yes, but that's just you by yourself. Things get more complicated the more people are involved. That's why it's amazing when we have a whole writing team and a whole art team and a whole production crew and we get a show. Yeah, it's amazing. Then there's too many cooks in the pot or a cook who thinks he's better than all other cooks. Or the cook that pays the other cooks and says, you have to do it my way or I'm not going to pay you. And then you get a, a chef or a head chef like Netflix who goes, hey, here's my kitchen. Here's some money. Here's the ingredients. Go have fun. Let me see what you make. Oh, hey, there's people coming in the door. Keep it up. <laughs> That's why it's also kind of funny that Netflix recently canceled several shows. Yeah. Which is like first ever for them. And it makes sense, though. They're finally finding that, oh. These are the shows that are pulling in the people for subscriptions and getting them to keep around. These ones aren't. Also, I think they're also doing a little bit of stabbing into Disney. Because some of these properties they canceled happen to be Disney properties. And I wonder why. Oh, Disney's starting their own streaming service. Oh, no, nah, that couldn't be it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, excellent episodes. Wonderful writing as usual. Can't wait to watch the next ones. I mean, there's 12 out now. So what are we like? That's 10, 8. There's like ep 8 episodes left for us. As of the time of this recording. By the time we actually get around to watching them, who knows? Yeah, I have no idea what it's like for Steven Universe right now. Because I heard some interesting stuff that was going on during the last episodes that we watched. Because apparently Cartoon Network was like, can you, like, go back to the way this show originally was? Fun and lighthearted and stuff? And the writer was like, it was never that way. And we're like, yeah, you didn't watch the show? Yeah, kind of like how people talk about how the second season of Gravity Falls is so much darker than the first. Like, did you watch season one? Do you even Gravity Falls, bro? <laughs> Seriously. But I say, we're out. <laughs> and this has been our thoughts. On Steven Universe, Season 5, Episodes 13 through 16. Hello, ladies and gentlemen and other fine creatures. Thank you for visiting our channel and thank you for making it through an entire video again. You are wonderful. If you want to help support this channel, we have a subscribe button. There's also the bell. 
watch more videos, please share them with all your friends, your enemies, your frenemies, your baked goods. Yes, that was totally random. I'm attempting to do improv. Stick with me here, man. <laughs> and then what happened? What happens next is you bought a commission. I drew something for you, and I gave it to you through your email. Yeah, I don't do physical stuff. If you want to print it, though, it's high enough quality that you can print from it. But if you don't want to do it that way, you can also subscribe to my Patreon. For a dollar a month, you can toss an idea my way, and I will turn it into a poll. And then I will draw it for everyone who is paying for it. And if you just want to hire resolution versions of the drawings you see right here, you can go there, give me five dollars. And you also get access to the polls and the voting and the craziness. Oh, and don't forget if you just want to hand us a little bit of money to help us buy coffee, to stay up late at night, or some energy bars or something, there's coffee. K-O-F-I. Three dollars through PayPal on that site. Boom. I get to drink for another day. Oh, yeah, and there's also other videos on our channel if you haven't seen them yet. Ember's Reading Room. It's a delight. You get to have someone read to you, and we make comments on it along the way. And if you don't like the comments, you can just fast forward through them. But hey, stick around. The comments are great. We give you an adult insight in some of these old stories. Some from friends, some from donated books, some books we got ourselves, and some books people bought for us. It's great, man. And there's some crazy stories in there. There are times when we read stuff and we're like, this is a kid's book? Come on in. Enjoy that. And now, over to Ember. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.